right now on five on your side at 10. Storm alert comes to an end tonight, but the gusty winds linger into Wednesday. We're tracking one more storm chance this week. Fire forces a dozen people from their apartments. A dog rescued from the flames. Tonight, the possible cause neighbors are pointing to. Remembering the white rat. He brought Whitey Ball in a World Series championship to St. Louis. We wanted to win and wanted us to enjoy in St. Louis and bring another championship. He would just tell it like it is, but he was always right. Tonight, former players, fans, and baseball historians reflect on the life and career of Whitey Herzog. First tonight, the threat of severe weather is now over after a round of showers and thunderstorms moved through the bi-state earlier this evening. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. Kelly Jackson has the night off. The forecast had us on alert today, but you can rest easy tonight. Let's get straight over to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with that weather first forecast. You know, the breeze is going to stay up overnight tonight, but the threat of severe weather, that is not in our cards for the rest of the night into tomorrow. In fact, the thunderstorms that were off to our north and west, you can see them there from the St. Charles and from the Chesterfield weather cameras. We were watching those storms tracking northeast. They just really couldn't do much. That's a storm cell that actually went between Mexico, Missouri, and Centralia, Missouri, and that's the one that's lifted up east of Hannibal and is out of the picture now. Everything else is well south and east of us. We will remain quiet here through the evening hours, but there were some reports of hail and some wind damage reported today from those storms, but they were pretty isolated and mostly from that initial wave of storms that was out to our west around lunchtime. This is a big storm system, so it has a lot of wind wrapping around it, which means tomorrow we will be looking at breezy conditions once again, just not quite as windy as what we saw today. Breezy and mild overnight, then bright, breezy and dry tomorrow. More storms are likely Thursday. We'll talk more about that, Mike, in a few minutes. Tonight, we're remembering one of the most popular figures in St. Louis sports history. Former Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog has died at the age of 92. He died after a short illness less than two weeks after taking part in the Cardinals home opener. The beloved Hall of Fame skipper from New Athens, Illinois, managed the Cardinals for 11 seasons, leading the Redbirds to three pennants and a World Series championship in the 1980s. Sports director Frank Cusimano is here with more on the man who brought us Whitey Ball, he will really be missed. He really will, Mike. And all you really need to know about the popularity of Whitey Herzog is what happened every year at the Bragging Rights game. They would show governors, senators, and sports dignitaries on the Jumbotron. They would get modest applause. Then Whitey's face would pop up, and the roar was incredible. He was one of us. He grew up here. He liked beer and hot dogs, and it didn't hurt. He was also arguably the best manager in the league. He also had great relationships with his players. Maybe not warm and fuzzy, but professional and fun. He put in his style, which was based on speed and defense, and he let them go. It's amazing how long after their careers ended, he remains friends with them. Fished with him and hunted with him. And, but when you're a friend of Whitey, uh, you're more of a psychologist just listening <laughs> and observing and maybe asking a few questions within an hour if you can get them in. Well, he didn't have many rules. He had two rules, show up on time and bust your tail when you're there. He just had that demeanor about him that you wanted to play hard for the guy. And uh, so the clubhouse was like his sanctuary, so he could let his hair down and be himself in there. Even in his 90s, Mike, every night he would watch Cardinal baseball. And when we would have him on radio or television, I felt like calling the DeWitts and saying, you ought to hire this guy, but he because he's still the smartest baseball guy in our town. Right, and it was always, you learned so much just spending 15 minutes talking baseball with him, no matter what the era was. Yeah, and he never lost his edge. Yeah. You know, he always had just a little a point he wanted to get across that maybe nobody else had brought up. All right, we'll check back a little later. Whitey is survived by his wife of 71 years, Mary Lou, and three children, nine grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. The family released a statement saying, Whitey spent his last few days surrounded by his family. We have so appreciated all of the prayers and support from friends who knew he was very ill. Although it is hard for us to say goodbye, his peaceful, peaceful passing was a blessing for him. Whitey Herzog reached every corner of the community and loved to talk baseball. Our Laura Barczewski is live outside Bush Stadium. She spent time with a local baseball historian who was close to Whitey. Laura. 
Mike, the newest generation of Cardinals baseball fans may have no idea who Whitey Herzog is, but a St. Louis baseball expert, Ed Wheatley, is making sure that this great man's legacy continues to be remembered and live on even through our youngest fans. His roots in baseball are deep. His roots in our St. Louis community are deep. And you know, I don't think he ever, ever forgot it. Baseball historian and author Ed Wheatley says from the beginning, Whitey Herzog loved baseball. The seed was planted in his hometown of New Athens, Illinois. He wasn't Whitey Herzog then, and his first name's Durrell. This is the game ball from the state championship. They lost to Granite City, uh, but it signed Relly Herzog. Later, he came into the name Whitey for his light blonde hair. Along the way, he watered those seeds of baseball knowledge as a player for different teams across the country. Made it to the major leagues. That in itself is an accomplishment. That eventually led him home to the St. Louis Cardinals dugout where he blossomed into an incredible manager fans loved and the players wanted to go to bat for. But when Whitey got here in 80, 82, it had been a long time since there had been a World Series. And then he energized this town 82, 85, 87, but he energized all of baseball with Whitey Ball. He retired in 1990, but didn't stop caring about the community and Cardinals baseball. He communicated with people and they loved it. Making his legacy the perfect example for kids, detailed in Wheatley's book, Incredible Cardinals, and he certainly was. And that's why it's important to study and know your, your, your game and whether it's even a ball player or you're just a regular worker or doctor stay home mom, stay home dad, whatever, you work hard, that's the moral of the story of the book, then you can be incredible too. But it takes, and Whitey was one of these guys that became incredible because of what he did to learn the game and how he functioned. Whitey's legacy certainly lives on here at Bush Stadium in the National Baseball Hall of Fame and of course, the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Our coverage of the life and career of Whitey Herzog continues now on KSDK.com and on 5 Plus. You can stream our 1990 special, Whitey, The End of an Era, on Roku or your Apple or Fire TV. Tonight, several families in O'Fallon, Missouri, are out of their apartments after a huge fire broke out this morning. It happened at the Enclave at Winghaven off Interstate 64. Robert Townsend talked to those who had just seconds to evacuate. It was a startling time for lots of people and their pets at this St. Charles County apartment complex. Well, the guy banged on the door uh, to you know, get us out of here to evacuate the building. Ryan Sanders and his girlfriend jumped out of bed, ran outside and saw their building was on fire. I thought it was something that they could just put out real fast. But shortly before 11 Tuesday morning, the fast moving two alarm fire kept spreading across the building. Firefighters say when they got to the enclave of Wing Haven Apartments, the flames and thick smoke had reached the attic. Basically, the half of the side of the building of, of our buildings burnt to the crisp. Tenants in all 24 units had to be evacuated. Where are we going to go? Um, you know, what, what steps are first? Those are just some of the questions now on the minds of Summer Estes and her boyfriend. Their apartment has heavy water damage. That's a big inconvenience because I can't even get my work clothes out of my apartment. So I just have to, I don't know what to do. A neighbor says long before the huge fire broke out, someone in an upstairs third floor unit was grilling food at the time. Hours after firefighters put out the fire, we saw this scorched grill here on the grass. And as far as I've been told, somebody had a medical emergency and they took him to the hospital and left it cooking. And it uh, kind of went up in flames after that. Right now, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Firefighters rescued two cats and two dogs, including this pooch that needed oxygen. Investigators found her in the apartment where the fire started. Nobody was injured, thankfully. Robert Towns at five of your side. Right now, the Red Cross is helping 12 families. Investigators say some of the tenants may be able to return to the units tomorrow. Tonight, a Normandy middle school teacher is behind bars, accused of sexually assaulting a student. Christopher Daniels is charged with statutory rape and sodomy. According to court documents, the victim told her mom about the abuse. Investigators say Daniels confessed to the crimes. Just minutes ago, we heard back from Normandy schools. Officials tell us Daniels was immediately removed from the building after learning of the allegations. A worker at the St. Louis Juvenile Detention Center is now out of a job. He's accused of giving THC gummies to two teens in custody 
who had to be rushed to the hospital. New tonight, Brent Solomon is just back from speaking with a group working to educate on the dangers drugs have on young people. Brent? That's right, Mike. Patrick Harris worked as a child youth specialist at the jail. I've learned the 23-year-old had only been on the job since last month. Since this situation, earlier this month, he hasn't been back to work. These are the felony charges that former juvenile jail worker is now facing. Two counts of endangering the welfare of a child, creating substantial risk. Court records show the former child youth specialist gave THC gummies to two detainees under 17 who were in his custody here at the St. Louis Juvenile Detention Center. Court records show the teens became unresponsive. I don't know why an adult would provide a substance to a child, period. Nicole Dawsey is with Prevent Ed. The group just launched a campaign to help adults better understand the impact legal drugs like marijuana can have on children who cannot get them legally. It looks like the typical effects from getting high accelerated. So your heart rate increases pretty exponentially. You can get dizzy, you can get hallucinations, you can get really nauseous. For children, are those symptoms worse? Absolutely, young people can experience those symptoms at a, at a greater rate than adults. The campaign, which hopes to soon go statewide, is called In the Weeds. And as a matter of fact, we get that all the time. Well, it, 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 I'm not gonna die from it, so it can't be that bad. Well, no. While you're not likely to die from a cannabis overdose, an overdose means simply putting too much in your system that your body starts rejecting it. That can happen when you're taking an edible and you don't feel the effects, so you take a little bit more and you take a little bit more and then all of a sudden it hits you like a brick wall. Those detainees are now out of the hospital. Prevent Ed is now working with youth groups to spread awareness. They've even created parent kits on how to talk to your children about weed. I've placed that info for you on KSDK.com. A convicted sex offender allowed to drive a school bus. The video captured him driving the school bus and her sitting on his lap while he abused her and while he was driving the bus. Tonight, the millions of dollars a Missouri school district is now paying a young victim's family. Today's storms raced across our region but didn't cause a lot of damage locally. The timing on the next round of storms and the changes coming behind them just in time for the weekend. New tonight, a Missouri school district, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is paying the family of a seven-year-old girl millions after a school bus driver pleaded guilty to sexually molesting her. Only on Five on Your Side tonight, our Christine Byers reports on how this convicted sex offender ended up driving a school bus. In 1968, James Philpott was charged with indecent exposure. In 1972, he was convicted of assault with intent to rape, both in California. But the Crawford County R1 School District hired him anyway to drive a school bus in 2023. He was 72 years old. This is certainly incredibly concerning, to say the least. Grant Boyd represents yeah, the seven-year-old little girl Philpot molested three times between April 27th and 28th of 2023. The video captured him driving the school bus and her sitting on his lap while he abused her and while he was driving the bus. There was a, at least one or more other children on the bus each time. Did the school district ever offer any explanation to these parents and this family as to how this happened? Based on what we have um, and what we've reviewed, it, it indicates the school district absolutely knew about these convictions for these prior sex offenses before this happened to our client. There seemed to be some kind of indication given to the family by someone at the district that they were only looking at things that occurred in the last 20 to 25 years. Phil Pot pleaded guilty to child molestation and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison in February. The school district paid the family a $3.1 million settlement this month. It's incredibly significant, especially given the protections that public entities enjoy under the law and in circumstances like this. There's no amount of money that can ever rewind the clock for a child sexual abuse survivor, but with this settlement, it will ensure that whatever this girl needs moving forward in her life, she will not have a single impediment to doing that. 
Five on Your Side sent an email to the school superintendent, Cole Biasi, asking what is being done to prevent this from happening again. He declined to be interviewed and sent a statement which read, The district is pleased that we were able to reach a resolution with the family involved in this situation. However, we are unable to comment further on this matter at this time. He also confirmed Philpott worked for the district for 19 months, from October of 2021 through May of 2023. What do you think needs to change to make sure this never happens again? There were other people involved in this situation that should answer some questions about why this happened. And he says laws need to change. I do think that we need to look at broadening the list of criminal offenses that automatically disqualify someone from working in um, the education industry with children. Christine Byers, five on your side. Well, tomorrow officially marks 100 days until the 2024 Olympics. The summer games kick off in Paris, France on July 26th, right here on Five on Your Side. And tonight, the Olympic celebrations have already begun. This morning, the Olympic flame was lit during a ceremony in ancient Olympia, Greece. This began an 11 day torch relay across the birthplace of the games. The flame will then head to France for a 68 day torch relay, culminating with the lighting of the Olympic cauldron in Paris. Chief Meteorologist Scott Cattle rejoined us now with that weather first forecast and Scott it looks like we dodged a bullet today. Yeah you know today was one of those days where a lot of things could go wrong but all the ingredients just could not line up together with each individual storm and so while we did have some severe weather it wasn't widespread here locally there were several tornadoes up in Iowa and we have a quiet night tonight across the St. Louis area. In fact, nothing really on the radar other than the ground clutter around St. Louis. All of the storms are much farther now southeast or well to our north at this point. So we have a quiet night on the way. There's your spinning energy in the atmosphere just kind of rotating here across the Midwest and that front is getting closer to St. Louis. But really, this is just part of the scenario playing out. This upper level system is going to take a bit to get out of here. And so tomorrow, while it's pretty quiet, we're still stuck with a pretty good breeze across the area. 72 right now. We're mild south wind at 16. Our top wind speed today, one of the gusts outside of any thunderstorm up to 48 miles per hour in St. Louis. Just a trace of rain though at the airport. 86 was our high before the showers and storms started moving into the area. We'll stay in the 60s for lows overnight tonight. Tomorrow on eventful day. It's breezy, not quite as windy as today. Low 80s during the afternoon. It's a day filled with sunshine. So then we're going into Thursday and Thursday we have another kind of the kicker for this system that's going to push all of this system out of here. And as it does so and approaches us, we're expecting Thursday late in the morning into the afternoon to see our chances for some showers and thunderstorms to increase across the area. Winds ought to be out of the south, maybe south southeast. That'll be feeding once again some moisture in across the region during the afternoon and evening. Some of those storms may have access to ingredients to create some severe weather. How widespread that might be, well, that still remains to be seen. But just based on what we're looking at with the latest guidance that's coming in from the National Weather Service and the model runs this evening, we think it's safe to say that we should be in a weather alert for Thursday afternoon for that potential of some stronger storms certainly impacting us as we head towards the weekend. So we'll start with your next seven days. Again, Thursday, another active day, particularly afternoon, evening hours, but then it settles down over the weekend. We're in the 60s for highs. It's cooler. It's more like April. We need a reminder that, you know, it's not the end of May and June because it's felt like it the last week. We'll see temperatures in the 60s. Overnight lows in some of the outlying areas may even be down into the 30s, but it looks like we'll escape frost and freeze which is a good thing. And then next week we'll creep back up temperatures back into the 70s. Very fortunate today for us that the ingredients just could not come together with each of those. And stores. 80 again tomorrow and 80, maybe 82, 83. All right, Scott, mm -hmm. thanks. Frank is back with sports. Cardinals and A's tonight, and we look back at the career of Whitey Herzog step by step. We hear from his former players and a very close friend. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. So baseball is not like college football. You don't get extra points for beating the good teams. 
So if the Cardinals beat the A's, it means as much as them beating the Dodgers. Lance Lynn on the mound, and this is what he does a lot of, getting strikeouts and also giving up home runs. Kyle McCann with a solo blast from the fifth, but the Cardinals have come back with two sack flies. They lead it three to two in the sixth inning. For 25 years, I would go to Whitey Herzog's house for an interview. He would say, Frank, how are you going to get me in trouble with the Cardinals this time? And then he would say, oh, I don't care. Let's do this. Let's revisit his remarkable career. What kind of manager is Whitey Herzog? I like to make things happen. June 8th, 1980 was the beginning of the end for a decade of mediocre Cardinal baseball. And boy, did Darrell Norman Elbert Herzog make things happen. He left nearby New Athens, Illinois for an eight-year big league career. He learned at the feet of the legendary manager Casey Stengel, which influenced his second career as a manager. After brief stints with the Rangers and Angels, he took over the Kansas City Royals and won three division titles. With the Cardinals, he began to make things happen at the winter meetings of 1980. All in all, dealer Herzog sent away 12 players that week and got back nine. Three eventual Hall of Famers changed teams. After just falling short of the postseason in the strike year of 1981, Whitey delivered his master strokes, acquiring shortstop Ozzie Smith from San Diego and fleecing the Yankees of a young outfielder named Willie McGee. By October of 1982, Whitey and his revamped Redbirds gave owner Gussie Bush one more championship. The Cardinals fell short of another championship, due in part to bad luck. Key injuries to Vince Coleman in 85 and Jack Clark in 87 neutered the Cardinals' offense. And then there was that guy, oh, Denkin. Right Whitey stepped in in 1990. He never put on a uniform again. And in 2010, he got the call to Cooperstown. Whitey was officially what we in St. Louis knew all along, a Hall of Famer. Whitey Herzog. And make no mistakes, Whitey was beloved by his players. And it wasn't just about baseball. There were plenty of early mornings spent fishing out on the lake. I knew him a lot outside of baseball, fishing and hunting and going to golf tournaments with him and just spending spending some time with him. He was a, he was a wonderful individual. Jump in the car at 4.30 in the morning, he would drive out there however long it took to get there and he'd make sandwiches, um, some liver sandwiches with an onion about that thick with mustard and uh, I actually, he's in the front on the trolling motor and I took a bite and I just, I didn't like it, you know, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings so I kind of tossed it overboard. And then as we went around the little lake like this, we came back in there, went the sandwich floating, floating by. You go home, drop me off, say, go take a nap, and Mary Lou will have these ready for you in a milk container at your locker at the end of the game, frozen, you know. So they're really good, fresh. Have your wife cook them up, and they were delicious. Mm -hmm. They always were, but we always had fun. And in this political season, we often use the phrase approval rating. Whitey's was off the charts. Maybe the highest of any sports figure ever in our town. We couldn't go have an iced tea somewhere that 20 people didn't come up. I'd get up to go get him a drink and come back, and women were sitting next to him with babies, and he was taking pictures. He always said the iPhone was the worst invention because everybody wanted a picture. But he did it for everybody, and he, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, if you've ever seen him in public, he was like a rock star. And it didn't matter age, because if you were the grandfather, you'd tell your granddaughter or grandson, that's why he hurts. I go up and get his autograph. And he had a complicated relationship with another great manager, Tony La Russa. Didn't yeah, he? he would always point out, well, you know, Tony had a really big payroll. You know, Tony had <laughs> really good players, and Whitey didn't have that all the time. No, so he didn't. There was definitely a little bit of a rivalry, but a definite mutual respect. Frank, thanks very right. much. We have much more on the life and career of Whitey Herzog on KSDK.com. You can just text Whitey to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a link. We'll be right back. 
athletes aren't the only ones headed to Paris for the Summer Olympics. One St. Louis doctor will be going overseas working with the national track and field team. We sat down with her. We're going to hear her story Wednesday on Today in St. Louis. And then at 7 a.m., the Today Show is kicking off the 100-day countdown to this Summer Olympics in a big way. Tune in tomorrow morning as the plaza will be transformed into Paris with dozens of hopefuls sharing their path to gold with the Today Show team. And Mike Tirico, who will host the Olympics, will check in from Paris. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.